When you're looking into a new company, what's one of the first things you notice? Its services? Functionality? Pricing? User experience? Probably not. The very first thing you likely notice is their brand, which can tell you a lot about all the above. Today, we'll dive into what branding means for a business, and why here at Jotform, we recently updated our own branding. Momentum. Welcome to Momentum, a podcast by Jotform, where we talk about the technology, productivity tips, insights, and best practices that help us move forward in business and in life. My name is Elliot, your host, and today I'm here once again with Jotform's Vice President of Marketing and Communications, Chad Reed. I feel like it's been a while. Good to have you back. It has been a while. I'm excited to be here. It has. And uh, it's good to have you here. Plus, we have this nice new podcast studio now for those who are watching on YouTube, which, spoiler warning, has our brand new logo on it. So let's get straight to it. Obviously, branding is a lot of things, but at its core, it's marketing. Uh, one of the most important pieces of marketing company has, in fact. So as the head of marketing here at Jotform, what does branding mean to you? And can you explain explain to our audience why it's so important. Yeah, I mean, not to overstate the obvious, but branding is your identity. It's how your customers see you. Um, it obviously carries carries enormous weight. It's your first impression. It's also your lasting impression. It's how people are going to remember you, even if they have no direct association with your brand. It's, it's uh, yeah, it's how you're remembered. So extremely important. Yeah, it's how you actually envision the brand and, and see it in your mind's eye, even when you're not interacting with it. Um, so the impression, I think, is is everything there. And it, it speaks volumes to what the company actually does. Uh, why do companies rebrand? Why do they change it up? What causes that? Um, and how often does that typically happen for a company? I did a uh, very lazy Google search before this podcast on how often companies typically rebrand, and uh, the first result said seven to ten years. Okay, uh, you sound educated when you say that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's—I uh, mean, obviously, it's going to vary a lot depending on industry and um, and the reasons for rebranding. And I think there are a myriad of, of reasons for rebranding. Um, some of them are just. Uh, you know, an executive decided to to get a fresh look, and and they implemented a, a change, or maybe your identity as a company changes, or what you're offering, or what you're putting out to the world has changed since the in, the inception of the brand, and and that's a, a good cause for rebranding. Um, and then in other cases, it's just reminding customers that you're still innovating, you're still relevant, you're still fresh, um, and that's a that's a great reason for rebranding. But you see all three. Uh, some companies wait, you know. Uh, maybe a little bit too long or mm -hmm. longer than the seven, ten, seven to 10 year window. And then I feel like some companies uh, just change for the sake of changing. And even when they're before their, their new logo is even caught on to, to customers, they, they go ahead and make a new one. And so, yeah, it really, really depends. But I thought that seven to 10 year uh, time frame is, was kind of an interesting one. I'm not sure if that even holds true in, in our space and the, in the SaaS productivity app space, you know, obviously in technology, I feel like it's changing all the time. Right. But, um, yeah, it's always, it's always going to depend. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's a matter of, as you said, sort of evolving with the times. And I think it's reflective of the, the product or service your company is offering, because if that stays static, you know, your brand is probably going to suffer. But as you update your product, your services, you stay relevant with the times. You know, I think branding is, is reflective of that. So that, that's where time frame makes sense. And I think one interesting thing to note about branding, uh, Kind of the pinnacle of it is how you used Google in you know your first line of this. I Googled, uh, did a lazy Google mm -hmm. search about this. Totally. You know you made it as a brand when uh, you become a verb. You know, like someday, like I would like to love to be able to say, oh, I, I jot formed or something like this. You know, uh, or Kleenex. I think is another good example of that tissues. But I think that's uh, that is the pinnacle of branding when it becomes the the verb that it's associated with, and it's a pretty rare distinction, I think, for a few. But uh, yeah, Google's a great example of it. We see, you know, on a much smaller scale, we do see components of that. When I, I always get really happy when when uh, someone publicly says, "Oh, you know." We'll, we'll accept your order. You just need to fill out this jot form. Fill out this jot form as this opposed to this form. this online form or name. this jot form form. Or when uh, when there's an a, an implied sense that 
they know what jot form is. That's that's kind of a win, and we're, we're fortunately seeing that more and more. Absolutely, um, and that's a you know that's always that's always exciting for us because yeah, people are making an assumption that other people know what jot form is, right? And, they and then it spreads, form. and yeah. then they feel out of the loop if they don't know. So it's exactly, all, yeah. it's all part of the process. Um, are there some examples you can give of a good rebrand and maybe a rebrand that sort of flopped? Yeah, good rebrands, um, just through the lens of of our space or our peer companies. Um, I thought Mailchimp did a fantastic mm-hmm. rebrand. Yeah, uh, um, Monday dot com had a really interesting or important rebrand. Uh, you know, they they had a maligned brand before they rebranded their full name as Monday dot com. I think they were DePulse. Uh, you know, pre right. to, you know twenty seventeen something so totally different. Um, and they yeah they completely overhauled and now everyone knows what Monday dot com is. So I think I think you know they did a really fantastic job. One that um, comes to memory is Asana. You know they they just had a visual identity shift with their logo and they they kind of kept a small element with their with their dots but they completely changed the the logo the, the interface the um the colors everything else and but i think i think they would you know they really executed it well and that kind of carried that through with their progression as a company so um yeah i mean it goes on and on I, um i think like design trends now are are focusing on simplicity and mm-hmm. and minimalism under- a little minimalism bit, yeah. a little bit yeah um but there are a lot of definitely a lot of really great examples. Um, as far as you know, famous flops are are really funny. Um, it, I'm, yes. Um, obviously, like locally here, Gap uh, had a, had a really mm-hmm. they tanked I also their logo. Just Googled that uh, before this. I I read that um, it cost the company about a hundred million dollars to go through that failed that's rebranding exercise, and they only kept the the new logo for for six days. So that's what you don't want to do. That's why you want to vet yeah beforehand rather than rolling the dice like that. That but, was like if if you had asked me to make a logo, I would have <laughs> probably come up with that or something slightly better. Like it was so. You know, it was uh, it was far. It had it had no no real purpose or like carryover from what they were doing. It was just a, I don't know. Obviously, they they caught a lot of flack for that. I don't want to pile on, but it was you know, it was historically a really really bad one. But you know, maybe if in the like any press is good press sense of sense of the word, maybe uh, there's yeah. six days and all the headlines and we're talking about maybe. it. You, you know, like a decade later, maybe uh, maybe it was worth hundred million dollars. Yeah, there's a know. there's a company I read about or I just saw a meme about it or something on on Reddit. It was some Japanese based um, company. It wasn't wasn't Nintendo. I, I can't remember exactly which one it was, uh, but they went through this whole exercise about uh, their rebranding. They bought a, they brought on a really famous consulting agency who had done some famous rebranding around the world. And uh, at the end of this exercise, they settled on a rebrand that was almost exactly the same, but like one corner was rounded instead of squared. And that was literally the only difference. Mm. Um, and so it got a lot of flack because people were like, you spent probably tens of millions of dollars to achieve the exact same look. But I think an interesting response to that I saw was they had to go through the process to spend that money to do the vetting to realize that they were actually in good shape. And if they did something different, it would alienate audiences in a way that they didn't want and it was still true to the brand. So it was needless as far as the fact they didn't change anything, but needed to get that level of vetting and they were happy with the outcome, which was interesting because totally. it showed, has to show you know where your priorities, I guess, lie as a brand. And if you go through the process, but you're like, hey, people still like our brand, this still is still relevant. That's also its own sort of validation, I guess. So lots yeah. of different lots of different ways to look at it. There's, um, a, there's sometimes companies that... Yeah, I mean, uh, Coca Cola always has a fantastic. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know. It's fascinating because they their logo has not changed uh, significantly in a hundred years, and right? they they haven't gone that minimalist route. Uh, you know, because they still have the typography and all this, mm-hmm. which is not the trend that you see a lot of companies doing. So I, I think that's interesting. But it, again, it's so ubiquitous. There's probably a very good reason they haven't done that yet, right? So yeah, it's interesting. One uh, one, it's kind of like a. An interesting brand story as, as sort of a flop and also like a, a brand strengthening um, example. But Pizza Hut, uh, you know, they get they get tagged as like a, a branding flop back in 2009 because they very poorly, barely, very poorly thought out, uh, decided to sort of rebrand as the Hut because they wanted mm-hmm. to. 
uh, attract millennials who were just texting and didn't didn't feel just like. This reminds me of Job at the Hut every time. Yeah, and not 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 very well executed. And I really hated their their logo <laughs> before that. That when they tried to, they, you know, it was really busy and they added added colors. And then, but very recently, they uh, they did something that. Um, I, th- I think I've seen a couple companies do where they they sort of pulled on your nostalgia mm-hmm. heartstrings, and they have uh, Craig Robinson in these ads, and they've like pulled out the the full aesthetic of what Pizza Hut was back when, you know, when certainly I was a kid, and uh, like generations before me when when they had that that certain look. Um, but it's a it's a fantastic like re rebrand where they've right. reintroduced something, and kind it's just funny back. how things have gone full circle. But it uh, but it also is. How people are looking at design now, and in, in this like sort of going back to simplicity, mm-hmm. and their their older logo is so simple and iconic, and and that's uh, that's like their modern identity too. So it's it's right. fascinating. Yeah. Well, I think it's it's timing too because I, I read an article that was judging sort of the commercials for the Super Bowl this year. Mm. And a lot of them were based on nostalgia, uh, probably because of the timing, you know, be, because of COVID, because of world totally. conditions, like having that little bit of nostalgia, it's sort of like comfort food almost yeah, a little bit. And I think a, that an accident. Um, brands are sort of catching on. This is sort of the time to to go back to that and sort of remind us of of some of those old days. Uh, speaking of, of pizza, you know, branding encompasses a lot. Also, um, also tagline and the the pizza tagline that always got me is Little Caesars, which is pizza pizza. Like mm-hmm. you've heard it at the end of their commercials. It's literally pizza pizza. And that has always stuck in my mind, annoyingly so, whenever pizza comes up, is the little voice of that guy in the little Caesars ad going, Pizza Pizza. And like it's you cannot get simpler than that. I don't know how much money they paid, but it works and it sticks with me for whatever reason. I'm not surprised at all that pizza pizza sticks with you. <laughs> what are you trying to say? <laughs> back back on topic. Um, <laughs> no, but what one thing totally random question I wanted to bring up because I've always been curious about this. Why do you think Monday.com rebranded to include .com instead of just saying Monday? I. Yeah, uh, above my pay grade. I, I've wondered that too, and I, I'm sure it creates some complications because it has to, right? You can't you can't own Monday, uh, right? So, but maybe they they want people to type in Monday dot com into the search bar, and it's just like even more guaranteed to bring them up, like because of the dot com and because it's their website address. I don't know. Yeah, anyway. and also right and. It, just <clears throat> branded searches of people looking for a company without typing it into the URL. You know, we, we see this with Jotform right. all the time. I'm guilty even periodically of like, oh, yeah, I'm going to log into Jotform. I'm going to Google Jotform, which is a, just astoundingly ridiculous thing for me to do, but I do it all, you know, pretty regularly. But maybe they're they're trying to combat that early on and and trying to fight people just Googling Monday because you're not going to right right There's you're not going to compete as a SaaS company against the, a literal day of the week. That so. is true. That is true. It's good uh, for them to uh, to identify that. Um, all right, uh, moving forward, kind of on this on this track, let's dive a little bit more into our own rebrand now. Um, you know, maybe you can shed some light for the audience. Uh, this rebrand happened back in October of of 2021, uh, but maybe shedding some light on kind of the context behind. Behind our rebrand, uh, what motivated it, what we were hoping to to get from it? Yeah, it, it was a really long process. Um, it was. That, that's actually gone back years of, of discussion and, and iterations, and um, kind of just landing on what what is drop form now, and um, like how do we how do we convey that in, in an accurate manner? And um, really, the the job form that is of you know in twenty twenty two is is Quite a bit different than the job form that Very was so. 2009 or, or you know whatever 2012 whatever the iteration of, of our previous logo was. So uh, we wanted we wanted the the look and feel of of the brand to to match what the product has become and what the what the customers have, have evolved into. So because right. we didn't um, it had been a while since we rebranded at that point. I know when we kind of first started out, uh, we had a few rebrands, uh, mm-hmm. but then we'd sort of been been static with the same look for a while. Uh, I think you actually brought a prop of the yeah. uh, original Jot Form logo for those who are watching on YouTube. Um, this is a shirt with this is the very first Jot Form logo, right? I think this is a, actually one of the the second second or third. Uh, but it, it was kind of the one that started morphing, you know, like hold it up a little bit. Yeah, uh, not in front of the mic. There you go. <laughs> sure. Um, 
Oh, yeah, well, I mean, and to, to, if you look at that compared to that, it's just a, a lot yeah, of evolution. Completely there. different. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it was it was certainly certainly a different look. It was uh, a bit busier. This is uh, the first shirt that I was piece of swag that I got when I joined the company, and even by that point, it was a little bit a little bit outdated. We'd we'd refreshed our look. I'm actually yeah. wearing another relic of the past. Um, I'm completely unintentionally. It's just a comfortable shirt, so I wore it today. But uh, this is our, our our old logo, our old pencil icon. Yeah, as that's well. the one we'd had for a while up until we rebranded last yeah. year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, it was it was it was time for change. I, I think, um, and it wasn't none of none of the rebranding <clears throat> meant that our old logo was bad or or didn't serve a purpose, and it certainly did. I think our Drawforms brand has always been kind of rooted in approachability, and mm-hmm. our, our old logo um, certainly had that. You know, it Definitely. made it a very—it was a very approachable logo. It was rounded. I think the pencil kind of conveys that. The warm colors, warm colors. The orange has like a friendliness to it. Um, so it really matched. You know, it, it really aligned well with with what we were as a company I, yeah, for, for the longest form. time. Drawform didn't even have a a homepage. You could use Drawform without even creating an account. I mean, it doesn't. Get more approachable right. than that. So definitely, we have uh, Poto as our mascot. You know, right? Yeah, Poto, the friendly cat. Uh, yeah, the yeah. Check out Poto. The definitely yeah, yeah. on our on our media page. You've probably seen them if you're you're an avid job form user, but we don't use them quite as much anymore. But I think he's still out there. Yeah, still yeah, out there. Poto's still there. Um, and I think it was also just a little bit again, sign of the times because, you know, MailChimp had updated their branding. Asana had um, several of these companies. I think it was a SaaS rebranding time, sort of the last few years. A lot of prominent SaaS companies, especially within the last few years, rebranded. And I think, you know, you kind of have to start to notice that a little bit because they're getting these sharper designs, uh, cleaner cut. And we're still warm and friendly and approachable, but, you know, we might also be trying to uh, appeal to maybe a more enterprise focused audience in some sense or we're trying to broaden our scale, you know, and we still want to, you know, kind of be able to play both sides of it, I think. So yeah. all this sort of went into it a little bit, the decision to go there. I think, you know, we didn't want to change just for the uh, you know, or feel any sense of urgency because our peer companies or competitors were rebranding, although they they were in droves. I, mm-hmm. I was doing some counting before this and um at least a dozen uh, rebranded yeah. more, more recently. Yeah, Keep lot. did. I mean, they changed their name from Infusionsoft to Keep. Uh, some of our payment partners did. Constant Contact did. Obviously, Mailchimp did. Um, Trello had a slight modification because they, um, when they were purchased by Atlassian a number of years ago, you know, I, I think they have more of like a brand realignment with their their parent company now. But either way, they rebranded Asana, as I mentioned. I mean, it's it's a huge list. Yeah, um, and then some of our competitors. Have rebranded multiple times in the time since that we did, mm-hmm. um, and you know, going so far as even changing uh, changing their their tagline, their core messaging, things like that too. So, uh, obviously, we noticed that, and, but we wanted to be really deliberate and, and make sure that we were we were doing it for the right reasons. And uh, yeah, you know, I, in the last three years, our product is just not the same product that it was mm-hmm. prior to that, and and that needed to. To be shown visually too, and and I think that's that's kind of right. you know one of one of the key drivers. We still have that base, you know, the forms, but now there's there's so much more to it. I think um, so much more substance there. Mm-hmm. Um, so once we sort of landed on this decision, um, how did we kickstart the the process? Like, okay, we decide we want to rebrand. What are the what are the first steps there? Yeah, you know, for us, we went about it. Uh, I mean, it almost reminds me of a smaller scale version of what you were the example you were mentioning with spending a lot of money to to make a small mm-hmm. change. But we we did uh, we we hired a uh, design consultancy agency to mm-hmm. um, to sort of kickstart the process and help us you know put some copy blocks together. They they created some visual identities. Um, I think. For the for the most part, we we really liked their work. I think they did a great job. But I think there was there was always some belief that we have really unbelievable design talent within Jotform, mm-hmm. and, and there's kind of no reason we shouldn't um, have them do the same exercise. But we also wouldn't have known maybe the necessary steps or the process without getting that kick started. So it was actually an important piece to have 
an expert come in and, and kind of like lay the, lay the groundwork. Um, and we're really, really grateful that they did. But and they helped uh, some with the sort of positioning. They they conducted some interviews, mm-hmm. um, you right. know, just to figure out what people perceive the brand as now. And then we sort of, I think, took that on again and sort of extrapolated that ourselves. But it was important to get an idea, um, you know, and they helped facilitate this of what our customers think of our branding and how it speaks to them. Yeah. Um, I think starting out with just the the customer research and the vetting uh, is is really important because who knows maybe every if everyone loves your brand then maybe you don't even go through the process but if there is room for for improvement then you do mm-hmm. um, so there we we sort of started the process in this this manner with the consulting agency then we sort of brought it in house uh, and now the process here is we have two aspects of. Uh, brand redesign, I think, that are, are really important. Um, there's the design aspect, which is literally the look, the shape, the feel, the logo. Um, and then you have, uh, because we kind of did a, a, a full overhaul, you, you also have a copy rebrand where you sort of change your tagline, your slogan, just your overall positioning. Um, and people not, might not realize those those are two very distinct components that often go into mm-hmm. a rebrand, but they sort of need to work in harmony uh, at the same time. And sometimes a company will just change a logo without changing the tagline or copy. Sometimes it's the other way around. Uh, we did both of those things. Yeah. Um, so can you talk a little bit about the process of the design aspect of the rebrand and how that was distinct from the process of the copy? aspect of the rebrand yeah and it's going to be different for us than I think a lot of companies because our our core design team um, is housed in Turkey and, and they sort of worked mm-hmm. uh, a little bit independently although with the same information that we were working mm-hmm. with um, as a marketing team when we were coming up with with messaging but um, again it goes back to the change in what Jafarm is as a company um, throughout the years and that that needed to be reflected our old tagline was the easiest online form builder, which served a phenomenal purpose 10 Mm -hmm. years ago. I mean, when forms were not thought of as being something that's easy to create, when developers were, you know, pulling their hair out trying to create online forms, even if they knew how to do it, it was it was difficult. Like that was the message. You know, we it's it's an easy way to create online forms. Fast forward to 2022, the assumption is that the SaaS products that you're using are easy to use. And the assumption is, even if you have no idea that we're out there, that uh, you can create an online form, right? And you know, we're, we're in the age of no code. No and, code is so much more prevalent now. Makes yeah. everything easier. So saying that we're the easiest way to do something, I think, loses, it devalues us, first of all, but it, it also just... You know, it's not it's not the strong message that that I think it, it once was. So um, that needed to change. Um, and and when we when we really looked inward on what Jotform is providing, and you know the the features, the the fact that we have the most integrations and the best security, and really f- phenomenal mobile capabilities, and we've released Jotform tables and PDF editor, et cetera, et cetera, then. It's powerful, and I think mm-hmm. we—that was a, a word that we, we sort of kept coming back to that we wanted to incorporate, um, but also, re, you know, include some some component of the productivity that we're we're enabling. So we we landed on a um, sort of an overarching tagline of "powerful forms get it done," um, which uh, you know was kind of a combined effort, and, and we we landed on it when our uh, CEO was was in town. We we kind of did a. A messaging retreat that you know you were you were part of as well, mm-hmm. um, and it was it was a really fun and thrilling exercise to be able to, to kind of come up with that, and um, and we also there's something so satisfying about knowing that that's the message that a lot of people are you know literally millions of people are going to going to read it's and uh, shaping the company, yeah, yeah, um, and it, it's also we kind of felt it as uh, future proofing a little bit. Um, you know, we are moving up market. We are more attractive today for enterprises and, and, and larger scale um, companies that that are looking for powerful features, not not necessarily ease of use. So um, that's that's how we're going to be going forward. And you know, we we wanted something that's going to stick. So. Uh, yeah, yeah, for all for yeah, all those yeah. reasons, you know, that's how we that's how we landed on our, our new messaging. Yeah, and we're we're definitely thrilled about it. I think, um, and going back to the 
the process a little bit of, of getting there. As you mentioned, we had sort of a, a messaging retreat, and I was sort of curating, I think, some of the foundational work that was done. Uh, we do this both. We did this both for the copy side and the marketing team and the design side. Uh, we have something. It's might be pre- pretty common practice for some companies. Uh, hack weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, some people might know the term. I didn't before I joined the company. But I think this was more common um, maybe in this industry or in uh, an agency or something. Um, but, for instance, our designers in Turkey, they will take uh, a week and do what's called a, a hack week. And this is something that they do periodically regardless. And it could be a designer. It could be a product team. could be an innovation team. Uh, but do you want to talk a little bit about what hack weeks entail? Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it is, it's certainly not, not uncommon and. Uh, for tech companies, um, and more often, you know, our product team will product teams will will do hack weeks if they want to, you know, have solve a, a particular problem, and and then also periodically our designers when uh, there's a, a large large scale design um, project. But I guess the the benefit is you can't just say, oh, in your spare time, can you can you come up with a new identity for job form um, or you can't tell the marketing team in your spare time could you could you nail down the, the messaging because uh, otherwise it's just we're just burdened or saddled yeah, with or, oh, too much day to day right from 1 to 2 p.m. on Friday let's get the new messaging for, for yeah, job form exactly. for the next 10 years it doesn't yeah. work like that it's, it's not collaborative to do it that <laughs> way so um, in both both instances uh, both for the design designers and then the the you know the marketing team, which is have, have heavily influenced by our writing talent. Mm-hmm. You know, we did hack weeks to 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 really nail it down and and say, hey, this is our priority. This is all we're going to do this week. This is what we're going to get done. It, it, it's both, uh, you know, it's exciting from like a team building component, but it's also um, it has like a sense of urgency and, mm-hmm. and like there's a little bit of competition, right? Because everyone is <clears throat> yeah, for sure. Everyone is. Uh, Working to to have the best, or they, you know, they want their idea to be the one that that takes hold. And and uh, I was so impressed with with everyone's work on the the marketing side. Um, you know, even people who team members who aren't writers by by trade were really mm-hmm. like producing amazing work, and and a lot of thought went behind it. Also, that was the really cool part of that whole whole exercise for me. I hadn't been a part of something like that before, but we asked, you know, our whole sort of at the time 15 person, whatever marketing team to come up with, uh, you know, kind of a blurb about the brand, what it stood for, potential tagline, mm-hmm. et cetera, et cetera. And <clears throat> that's the only time that everyone, the marketing team was working on sort of the same thing. Like you, yeah. you have different people working on different things and it was really cool to sort of unite and have a couple calls where we're all working on and focusing, you know, our, our effort on, that one thing. And it was really interesting to get different perspectives of, yeah, people who maybe <clears throat> weren't copywriters, like, uh, you know, Patrick behind the camera, like Francis, like every everyone was working to come up with a different uh, approach. And no matter what, what perspectives they're bringing into it, it was something unique. Everyone come, came up with something unique. And I thought yeah. that was a really cool sort of unification exercise for the team. And it gave us a lot of our foundation um, to work from when we did go and have the messaging retreat where we finally nailed down the tagline. So, Totally. Um, that was one of the coolest sort of projects I think I've been involved with um, personally. Yeah, same. Um, yeah. So I guess going going on, we ultimately settled on powerful forms, get it done, <clears throat> as you said. And you want to talk a little bit about, we sort of covered the copy, but then maybe a little bit about the design. And even though we aren't the designers, of course, some of the ideation behind why our logo now looks like this instead of what's on your shirt. Yeah, um, there, there was a ton of thought that went into it, and uh, our, our lead designer, a gem, um, really spearheaded the, the effort. And they had the they had the same basic task, and, and they had a lot of concepts and a lot of really amazing concepts, design concepts that ended up on the you know didn't make it into the final no, the final round even. Like we, we just it's, have we kept seeing these hack weeks, and we. The designers went through a couple of them to get there. I think well, three yeah. even, um, and we would see them and we're like, "Wow, that that wow, brand yeah. looks amazing! Exactly. Wow, that's awesome! Like, hey, let's do it!" And then it's like, "No, kept refining, kept refining." And yeah, you don't necessarily understand until you see the bigger picture, but that that was all part of the necessary process. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, I mean, completely. Um, I mean, I think you know, obviously the the logo that we have now is is a complete overhaul from what we had. We we did carry over 
the pencil icon. Yeah, and you can I, kind of see. And that was uh, that was an important carryover, and I think it, it kind of goes with the name of jotting something. You know, it's, mm-hmm. it's jot form, um, and then that allowed us to to sort of have have a little bit of a bridge to from the past to the, to the future. Um, but really, everything else is completely new, and uh, the colors and um, the roundness of the logo, and it's, it's sort of designed to reflect that we're not just forms. Like we have multiple products and multiple tiers and multiple use cases. Um, in a lot of ways that even within the product navigation that the colors and the general shape of it sort of changes to, to reflect different products. Mm-hmm. And that, that was something that, that yeah, I know we were really going cool for piece. is flexibility. Yeah. Uh, one of the obvious changes that uh, was probably overdue was just the lower casing of the F it's, in Jotform. form. bring that up next, yeah. Yeah, and that, it, it's such a, it was such a point of contention <laughs> for it really so long. Was. Um, and, and it was something that... You know, we would we used to like reach out to publications if they lowercase the f. We loved our uppercase and, f. And you know, we we were yeah exactly. But you know what? No one referred to Jawform or would spell it out on their own with a lowercase f. And we had to coach new employees to capitalize the f. And you know, at some point you have to let it go. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it just was not sensible. <laughs> and you know, like. Our support forum and Twitter and wherever, like just no one was doing it, and you have to just at some point give in, right? So there was some element to that, but it was also just a simplicity, you know, and yeah. in this move toward uh, not forcing something that's that's kind of aesthetically weird, yeah, uh, yeah you know, just so modern, yeah, and it's a lot cleaner. And I'm, I'm after after about a week, I'm completely settled into. <laughs> yeah, it took all of us some time. Like, yeah. we're gonna have to get over this, but it's pretty easy to get over the hump. But now, I I don't think I could imagine going back to an uppercase F. No, you know, sort not, of not now. Distinct yeah. for for the sake of it. Um, yeah, no. Uh, by the way, for the people who are more interested in uh, our graphic design overhaul, we have a video and a blog article that kind of. Um, takes you through the process of it and sort mm-hmm. of where we arrived, uh, where we got to. Um, so I encourage anybody to check that out if they want to. It's on our YouTube channel and on our blog. Um, so we have the brand settled on now. We know what we want to look like. We know <clears throat> uh, what we want to say. Now it's a process of actually redoing everything because it's not just as simple as, oh, mm-hmm. this is our new logo. Um, <clears throat> the, the stuff that has to go into it, you know, we need a, a new landing page. We need uh, a whole entire overhaul of our website, including changing all the uppercase Fs in our old name to lowercase Fs, mm-hmm. uh, you know, new graphics package, a bunch of different copy blocks, um, descriptions, uh, obviously videos, PR announcement, press kit, um, blog posts. This is a whole effort. I mean, we treated it like a launch back in October, yeah. um, like we would launch a product because in some ways it almost was in a way. It's sort of our new rebranded product of job form. Um, so it was really a hands-on initiative to go through that and pretty much everyone was involved in it again which i thought was pretty cool i completely underestimated exactly all the work that needed to go into it was a rebrand. so much <laughs> um and i've i've done you know at, at previous companies uh much smaller scale rebrands that you know were just like oh we'll just ch- change the color and and update it on the, the main navigation mm-hmm. That just was not the case. I completely, yeah, I completely un- underestimated. We there were hundreds of pages uh, within Jotform that had the old logo. Um, you know, it's blogs or like things that headers that needed to be redesigned. Mm-hmm. It wasn't just changing it into all like the a redesign because all of our all of our products have their own design. Uh, like tables has its own design, so all mm-hmm. of that needed to be not only configured but also implemented across you know site wide across everything. Hundreds yeah. of pages, but thousands of mentions of Jotform where you have to change the F to to lowercase. Yeah. Um, thankfully, I think we're able to to automate that for the most part, but still mm-hmm. a lot of manual process to to go through the whole exercise. Yeah, and, and honestly, that's I would even say that's on the easier side of the changes because then there's the external sites, mm-hmm. and you know, we have partners, hundreds yeah. of, of other websites where Jotform is listed. With, yep. you know, if it's a partner directory, if it's a third-party, um, you know, like review site or something like that. Social media profiles, uh, Glassdoor, you name it. Like it's when we actually got down to thinking, like, okay, like 
or making a list of where all we need to update this logo. It was it was substantial. Mm-hmm. So huge. Um, that took a that took a huge team effort. Um, I mean that that was kind of the the fun part about this in a way. It wasn't this wasn't just um, this wasn't just a marketing effort. This wasn't just a design effort. You know, this was product. This was growth. This was support. Mm-hmm. This was uh, all hands on deck to to make sure that we were executing a, a rebrand because you don't want to you don't want to you know half asset half asset and just have you know a uh, day of launch all of a sudden like people are finding the old the right. old logo and right and it, it becomes, no, we want to be thorough every every touch point that we could we could control at least yeah completely mm-hmm. um, but yeah it was it was something that uh, was really exciting from a marketing perspective we did treat it like a product launch. Um, in addition to all the the nitty gritty stuff that that we were just going over, you know, we we announced it. Um, it just happened to to coincide with a, a year that we were that we reached 10 million users, right. our 15th year in business. Yep. So it was a really amazing time to remind people, like, hey, not only are we hitting these milestones, but we're we're ready for the future, and this is this is all packaged into our rebrand. Um, that was a really great opportunity to do that, and. Uh, yeah, we we put up um, we created a, a new advertisement with the the new video, and that was the high you know the highest production value we've mm-hmm. we've, we've put into a video. Um, really set the stage for for future videos. Um, yeah, you know some PR opportunities, uh, new advertising, um, obviously the blog post that that you mentioned, uh, and then yeah billboards. You know we uh, that was the first time we we we. We dabbled with with out of home yeah. advertising, and we wanted we wanted Jotform to be known by those who don't know us. You know, not just users. We have a lot right. of users, but we wanted Jotform to be to you know to have an identity with people who maybe aren't in the market for forms. But yeah, and you know, it felt like the right time with all these things uh, coinciding. Yeah, for those who are yeah. watching on YouTube, I have a mini version of our uh, Jotform billboard. This was out for a few weeks last October, almost a month or two at that point. Um, and we think it turned out all right. So you could see this all over San Francisco if you were here. Um, and then we got these awesome little models, pretty heavy too. Um, but yeah, you could see this around, and I had some people say that they saw our new brand and looked good, so yeah. that was very rewarding. Um, I, and I think that was sort of the theme of this. I think it was rewarding for everyone who was kind of involved in it, uh, because I think a lot of us, marketing team and even people not in the marketing team, actually really stood behind the rebrand. You know, I think it's different mm-hmm. if you're with a company who rebrands all the time. That's a little thing, or maybe people don't get it. But I think everyone genuinely was on board with the rebrand. And, you know, leadership was good about communicating about it, like why we're doing this, and you know, during our demo days. And I think everyone was actually impassioned behind our new message, our new look. And they're kind of, they're proud of it. They're happy to be behind it and standing behind it. I think it was sort of cool just to see all of that unite and then yeah we get the we get the billboard in san francisco which i'm just going to leave up on the table but i thought that was pretty cool <laughs> um so it was an it was an awesome moment uh, definitely for you know me as an employee and i think uh, i think totally. a lot of people here yeah it, it's it's uh, it's a milestone in itself just to be able to get that out there and and i think for for our team in turkey too when mm-hmm. they they see the pictures coming back of of the work that they did and these, these rebranding efforts that they did on billboards in San Francisco and this international right. hub. Right. Um, I think that was Seen really by cool. by hundreds cool of thousands of eyes over the course of, mm-hmm. you know, those, those couple of months. Uh, it's really cool. And yeah. then of course, uh, fun part, we also get some, the rebranded swag, which has to be, you know, we send that out to like partners and people in our own, um, obviously in our own employee shirt that I'm wearing. We do have socks, which again, I'm going to have to show for people who can see <laughs> jot form with very comfortable socks, by the way, I'm not sure if these are for sale, but they should be. Um, yeah. I just wanted to have an excuse to do that, but <laughs> <laughs> had to plug the swag. It's awesome. They are. Uh, they're great socks. Um, so I guess thinking about the entire journey went with our rebrand and you know where we came from where we ended up at uh, what would you say were was the single biggest challenge of the whole thing and the most rewarding part of it looking back on everything oh there's so many challenges I mean getting consensus is always 
really difficult. There has to be, you know, fortunately our, our CEO was really involved in the process and, and, and fortunately he's very opinionated because I, I yes. think if, if I were looking at it, I, w- I just saw so many things that I liked. I think a lot of people have so many things that they liked and, uh, and yeah, getting, getting consensus around, um, the best idea is, is always, is always a tricky part. And, um, and honestly, I, I think it, I think it's difficult to turn down good ideas, you know, it is. and, and that, that's just unfortunately there's so a part many of the good process. ones that didn't make it as we yeah. were talking about, and they were legitimately great. They just weren't quite it. Yeah, you know, and and for whatever reason, they you know we went with what we went with, but um, yeah, I think that's that's a challenge. Uh, but not to, yeah, I, I think I think there's some acceptance that that's just part of the process, and you know, that, that, it worked out. Um, but then. Uh, you know, the, the best part of the, the process, obviously, is just the payoff and, um, you know, more people know about Jawform now and more mm-hmm. more people are excited about Jawform. Being involved in the hiring process so much, uh, it was great to have that, to have interviews while that was going on. For sure. And to, to be able to just say, like, well, you might have seen our billboards uh, on Highway 101 or whatever mm-hmm. whatever the case was. Um, and I think that they that lended us some some maybe credibility or, or something in, in the recruiting process, and um, obviously that's that's carried over too. But it's just cool, you know. I, I, I know it's, I know day. it's like a small thing, but whenever someone reaches out or says like, "Oh, I saw your you know saw your advertisement," or I had a friend in Ohio text me the other day like, "I just saw you on a commercial on YouTube," and I'm like, oh, "That's cool. Like that's that's the <laughs> that's is. the brand effort. That's you know." That, it's uh, it's working. So just hearing those little like one off stories are, are always kind of a I don't know they're 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 exciting. I agree. Yeah. I agree. It's the ecosystem growing. I mean, every brand who's ubiquitous daily household name these days they had to start somewhere, right? Yeah. And it's uh, getting the awareness out there, and I think it's uh, yeah, it's been rewarding for so many of these reasons and and more honestly. Um, ultimately, what do we feel like we we got out of it? Uh, like I think you touched on it a little bit. It's the uh, awareness, sort of the relevancy of our brand and our product suite and our powerful powerful tools. Is there anything else we you envision that we got out of this rebrand um, that maybe you didn't even see coming or you didn't expect? Um, I don't think anything that we didn't expect. Uh, it, it's it's amazing to have the the new brands and not feel like it's something hanging over our heads mm-hmm. or that that we don't align with with our future goals. You know, I, and I think that's you know it wasn't like I said it wasn't unexpected, but um, it feels like we we achieved it. Um, and just the recognition. I, 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 there are so many examples of companies that when they rebrand and even if they they stick the landing and, and have a, an amazing new look that they're, they get blowback. Yeah. You know, um, they make a minor change and all of a sudden everyone jumps on it and says like, Whoa, that looks look, the dumbest looking, what, you know, what, uh, yep. didn't, didn't, didn't yep. really happen with us. And I'm, I'm really happy to say it, you know, to see that. And, I, yeah. um, People are resistant to change, I think, inherently with any with any brand or any, any look. So even a good rebrand can sometimes get that. But yeah. you're right, we really didn't. Uh, we didn't. Yeah, you know, and we were even reaping some recognition. You know, months months down the down the road. I think it was just a couple of weeks ago, or you know, in, in January, um, there was the tech design blog, uh, which we had not reached out to, but they they compiled the best rebrands of, of 2021. And we were like right in the thick of that list, um, um, you know, listed among fortune 500, like huge companies. And then, and then there's job form. And that was kind of like, Oh, we now we're, we're not only like a, a big enough company that they feel comfortable just mentioning us as a mm-hmm. significant rebrand, but they reckon they identified that what we actually changed was, was significant. And um, yeah, it was, it's always great. And, and just the, 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 Feedback, like I said, the one-off feedback. When people were mm-hmm. seeing it, you know, they were reaching out and just saying the new logo looks awesome, and you know, amazing job on that, and um, that's that's great. Yeah, that was really validations great. amazing, and that's, mm-hmm. that's why I do it for in some ways, right? Uh, based on everything we we discussed, uh, what would be your recommendation to other companies out there uh, looking at a rebrand? I mean, obviously, not everyone's going to go through the same process yeah. or have the same people in a house or need the same things, but sort of just broad general advice. Uh, what would you give to a company? Um, just be deliberate, you know. Uh, 
do do your due diligence, do it for the right reasons. I think it's probably actually the most most important thing. Like, you know, ask yourself why are you actually rebranding if if it's uh you know, hopefully it's not just that you you grew sick of the color or right. something like that. And um think about it. Try to think about it through the the eyes of your your customers or your potential customers and not just because you're you you've seen the logo over right. and over again and assume that they must be tired of it. You know, have a have like some real real uh, reason for it and then of course yeah just just don't rush to anything I, I think that was probably the the uh, smartest thing that we did it was just taking our time and looking at multiple examples and like having it feel right before we we uh, we went through you know the launch that we did and and uh, yeah it, it took us a long time it took us a long time in it and it shouldn't be a rushed decision and um, you know something that you you knock out in a week, it should be, you know, really, really well thought out. So yeah, have to for, be patient with it. Yeah. So for any company, even if, you know, big or small, just uh, don't, uh, yeah, just just work hard and take your time on it. It's going to pay off. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, anything we uh, we missed here? I think we've been pretty thorough and sort of why we did this, how we did it, um, what it's brought us, some other examples, but anything we left out? I don't think so. Yeah, uh, visit jotform.com to see it for yourself. Please do, or just look at the logo right there, <laughs> or this guy right here. Uh, we had a great time rebranding. We're really proud of our of our new brand, and we, we stand behind it. Uh, we hope that you guys do as well. Thanks for tuning in today, and we'll catch you all later. 